A big thanks to Jobber for sponsoring today's video, but more on that later. Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts. We're here at a stormwater maintenance job. We've got an area that's been failing some water standard tests from the EPA. We're gonna see if we can help clean up some of the ditch a little bit. There's been a lot of debris in this drainage ditch over the years, and I get the idea that a full dredge is probably the only thing that's gonna solve it, but I think the client is wanting to approach it a little more conservatively, so let's try some you know, hand work and getting the trees out and raking some of the junk and see if that fixes it first before we bring in heavy machines, and which I'm absolutely fine with. I have no issues at all with that. This is a problem that I believe is going to try and be addressed later. Maybe we'll have a video on that. One of the first things we quoted was we were gonna get a Yanmar with a mulching head and just clear all this out. They said no to that size of a job. So now we're only looking at this south bank which is gonna have quite a bit less. I'm gonna try and rake some of this out so we've got boots and waders and all that good stuff. Not yet. There's a eight footer in there somewhere. No. -uh. Yeah. I'll keep my eye out. I would. <laughs> Maybe I won't be putting those waders on after all. This area is the main issue. This tree got flipped over during a recent hurricane and half of it's just hanging out in the water. So all those leaves decomposing that plant matter, this is the area where they have to do their testing to see what they're discharging. And it's just been failing all those tests. So that's the main thing that prompted this job. Initially, I'm thinking I'm probably going to be cutting those down with a chainsaw and then using the Ventrac to skid them to the trailer load them up and then haul them off to the local landfill. So this is how we're loaded out. We've got the Ventrac with the tough cut deck. I don't know how much we'll use that today. We've got the bucket with extensions. We've got the dual wheels if we need them. Lots of hand tools, string trimmer fuel, backpack blower in the truck. Bringing the tough cut deck and the power bucket on the same trailer are always super helpful. I found that with my seven by 14 foot trailer, the most I can get on there is three attachments the bucket one mowing deck and then another mowing deck if that mowing deck is flipped up most of the times two attachments is what will fit comfortably but in some instances i can fit three it's a real pain in the butt though so if you're wanting to take a ventrac with several attachments you're going to need wider or longer than a 14 foot trailer i would say the power bucket is by far my favorite attachment for this machine i got it as one of those things where i thought there would be some uses for it i just didn't know what they would be for but once you get it you see how you can really use it on every single job so this stretch of ditch that i'm working on is i think close to a quarter of a mile long and so being able to run everything back and forth with this bucket is super helpful this curve right here is one of the main reasons why i thought the ventrac was going to be the main tool i had to use it's just so narrow between the corner of that fence post and where that slope starts you can see the Ventrac's already starting to lean. So something like a full-blown excavator going up and down this quarter mile over and over and over. Not only was I worried about the ground conditions because you're gonna see over this job how wet everything is, but I also just did not like the angle that that thing was tracking on. This is pretty neat. This is a chain locker. If you're anything like me, you kept all your chains in a bag <laughs> and they got all tangled up. This thing's really nice. Holds all your chains so they, you know, stay in line. You don't have to worry about untangling them. That Toro 60 volt chainsaw, I've got no complaints. The only time it's ever given me problems is when I put a 20 inch bar on it and it's only supposed to have an 18. Or maybe I'm mixing that up and it's a 16 inch bar and I put an 18. Whatever it is, once I swapped it back to the original one, it worked fine. And I've dunked that thing in pond water before and it still works. It's, it's a great little tool. And you know, for the amount of times I use a chainsaw and I don't wanna have to worry about gas or sitting there and cranking on it, getting it to start up, it really is the way to go, at least for my business. So I hope they come out with some that have a little bit more power, a little bit more torque, you know, some longer bar options. But right now this is the only one they have. But again, I, I have no complaints with that little electric chainsaw. So when it comes to this tree, 
it was just as simple as cut it up and skid it out with the Ventrac. I wish, I wish, I wish I had some way to grab things with the Ventrac. I don't have the grapple option for the bucket. I don't really like it. They are supposed to be coming out with something and I'm waiting very impatiently for that. But since I don't have that, it was just manually cutting everything with a chainsaw, hooking it up with some ropes and using the Ventrac to pull it that quarter of a mile to the loading area. As I was making that cut, I got a real sick feeling in my stomach. I don't necessarily mean like some kind of premonition thing. I just didn't feel safe. I'll show you why, but I just went ahead and took 10 minutes and ran a line to the Ventrac to pull some that way. This area is all rocks at a 45 degree angle. So it's very difficult terrain. My bar is like there's rocks all up here. So I don't have a lot of faith that I can get my, my chainsaw out quickly. I've got even less faith that I can quickly move. So that's just a little insurance policy that I'm hoping makes us a little bit safer because I just did not feel good when I started making that cut. Well, that went just like I had hoped. I'm glad I spent a couple extra minutes running that line. That was, uh, there was no reason not to. It just cost me a couple minutes. So I went to pull this tree and the Ventrac pulled it fine, but it got hung up on this stump. I thought, you know, <laughs> let me just keep yanking. The stump's got to come out anyway. So let me see if I can yank it. But the ground was too soft and the, the Ventrac was, you know, just starting to, to turn the ground into mud. So I was like, ah, let me just go ahead and cut it. Still a lot more handwork than I thought. And that's just, you know, a consequence of the way I have to pull this. It's, I can only do it in one direction to get the branches to not dig into the ground. So I have to break out the sewer grate hook in order to get it over the stump and, and pull it. But it works fine. It's just a lot of manual labor. Then there was this weird little thing that was growing up through the fence. So I cut it at the base and then had to start pruning these limbs as it came down to get it through the chain link. These weeds were something else that they wanted gone. This is my first time using one of these lake rakes. The float is there for if you need it to float, but I found that at least with these weeds that I was using, uh, I really only started having good success when I took it off. That rake needed to sink down in order to grab a hold of those things. So with that float, it just didn't have any bite to it. I kind of struggled with it for a while at first until I said, let me take this float off and see if that improves things. And, and yeah, it, it did a lot. It was able to get a lot of it out. What I found is that that rake, it's very cheap rake from you know China off of Amazon. It works great. It's good for getting the weeds to the shoreline, but it's not strong enough. It doesn't have enough bite to get it up on the shoreline. So I just use that sewer grate hook that I have, and it worked really well. Just sling it down in there and pull it up. And it's not easy by any means, but it worked really well for getting that on the shoreline. The reason I wanted it on the shoreline was so it could dry out over the next few days. If you've ever taken debris right from a waterway and you try and move it, you're going to waste a ton of time and labor on moving water. So let everything dry out first. If you're taking it to the landfill, you're also going to waste a lot of money because you're going to be paying for just dumping water, which doesn't make any sense. So if you've got the option, pull it up on the shoreline, let it dry out for a few days. My camera ended up corrupting the SD card on day three, so I didn't get shots of it, but there were a ton of crayfish or crawfish, however you want to say it, that were uh, got tangled up in these weeds and that I had to end up saving. One thing I found gave that rake a little bit more pulling power is if you did it sideways, then it would sink down even further and it would have a lot more bite to pull some of these little uh, weed icebergs, whatever you want to call them. There was just a ton of growth in this stretch of pond. It was pretty crazy how much there was. But if you've never used a lake rake or you're looking for one, yeah, just get the cheap one off Amazon. I think this was like 75 bucks. I bought a USA name brand one that was, I want to say a little over a hundred. I got two just in case. It's worth it for me to just have both because if one breaks and I don't have anything else, then you know, that's just not an option for a project like this. But the cheap one was all I needed to use. It's got a little string you attach that you throw it. That did have a little bit of a learning curve, figuring out how to throw that thing so that it landed where you wanted and you know hooked on to what you needed it to
Oh, look at this one. Once those weeds were out, there were, I want to say another, I don't know, nine or 10 clusters of these wax myrtle trees that had to be cut and removed. So that's what the next stretch of job was. It was incredibly boring. It was just cutting things down and skidding them a quarter of a mile to that loading area so that they could eventually be loaded up and hauled off to the dump. This was a lot more handwork than I anticipated. I still do this thing where, you know, when I look at these trees standing up, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that won't be much to take them down. It won't be a, a lot of hard work. But it, of course, it's more than I anticipated. And that's not new to me. I mean, when I first started mowing and I wasn't that great at quoting, I would see things and say, oh yeah, that'll take this long. And it always took longer. It's just one of those things that'll come with time where I, I at some point, I will be able to look at a stand of trees or stand of brush and accurately say, well, this is how long it's really gonna take because you know once you get in there, you gotta crawl around and you gotta cut little branches to get access to big branches and then you gotta reposition them and then you gotta rake everything up at the end because there's gonna be old dead twigs and leaves that have to be cleaned up. But at this point, I'm still kinda uh, naive isn't the right word, but I'm just like, you know, that's not bad. It's just a, a dozen stands of trees. We can cut that up pretty quick and you know, we'll do this whole ditch in one day. <laughs> I really did think I'd have this whole first ditch finished in one day and I think it took three. So the only good thing is that I had a good attitude about it and realized that I was gonna make these mistakes. That stormwater job I did where I was climbing around in the ditch helped set in my mind, yeah, I'm probably gonna make a lot of mistakes. So this is day three where I said that unfortunately I lost almost all of my footage up to this point. And like, what a spot to lose it, right? I, I had been working on getting that stump out and I'd worked too close to the water line and my tires just sank down into the mud. So that isn't even as bad as it was stuck. This is like halfway getting it out. I had to run a, come along to a really tall and stout fence pole to get myself out. And the issue was once it started pulling, I couldn't get it back in gear from neutral because of the slope. in gear oh my goodness finally I got a high enough where I was able to rock it in the gear and then of course you could drive it out on its own power all right back to work this day I also used the bucket to haul all those aquatic weeds from the shoreline to the loading area that was a lot of handwork because I had to scoop them in again that Ventrac can't grab and since those weeds were right up on the water line, I didn't want to push into them and accidentally put them back in the water. Once that was done, I started prying up and digging up that root ball and it worked really well. The teeth on the Ventrac bucket, in my opinion, are a must for that kind of work. Not only did it help pry that root ball up and break roots, but it was also useful for digging dirt away. I finally got it pulled out put a ratchet strap on it and broke it loose, then put a ratchet strap around it and hooked it to the bucket so that I could carry it out. And that grapple would have been so helpful on this job to have. I must have took the teeth off at this point to do a little grating. Maybe I left them on, I can't quite tell. But just smoothing everything out roughly to get it ready for seed. I finally start on the other ditch. I had to clear a little bit of an access path uh, on one of the banks. There was a lot of overgrowth and there was only, I think two stands of wax myrtle trees on this one. They had to be cut down. This was one of them. I did also have to hand load that debris to take to the loading area because it's too far to pull things on the vent track. So this was a little bit of hand loading in the trailer that I did. It was maybe 10 minutes of loading and uh, three or four minutes of unloading once I got to the spot. So it wasn't that big a deal. Now with that done, we can start mowing with the Ventrac. And the Ventrac was nice because when you've got those dual wheels on, it can handle a lot of the wet areas, all these slopes. You know, you don't really feel like you're gonna get stuck or anything like that. There was one or two times I did almost get stuck. That was my own fault for pushing it a little further into muck than I should have. But this saves so much time over string trimming. And even if you can only get, you know, let's say a foot of mowing done on the Ventrac, that will save you so much time and labor compared to string trimming that same foot. So this is day four of the job. It's the first day I'm running the Ventrac. I'm getting as close as I can until that water and muck won't let me go any further. This is working on the other ditch. Again, the Ventrac did great up and down these slopes. 
The thing that's nice about this is that it kept me from having to straddle these slopes with the string trimmer, which if you've never done, that'll get your back sore real quick. When you're trying to stand on an uneven surface and swing a string trimmer around, it's such a pain. So really nice to have the Ventrac with the tough cut attachment to handle the heavy lifting on this. Talking about me not knowing what I'm doing, when I first saw all these trees standing up, I said, yeah, I can load all this stuff by hand and unload it. That won't be an issue. And then this, you know, now it's all loaded on the field and you can see everything that's laying down is stuff that I've cut. All that has to be moved. So I saw that and said, you know what? No, I'm not doing that by hand. So I went ahead and rented a dump trailer from a guy in McClenny, Jeremy, he owns McClenny Mower and Saw. I use that to bring the Ventrac. And then from Quality Equipment and Parts, which is in Columbia County in Lake City, that's a family owned forestry dealership. They've got all kinds of equipment, but they have a Yanmar 35 with a thumb that they delivered for me. And that was so nice to not have to worry about, you know, how am I gonna get the Ventrac there and this Yanmar? In some instances, that delivery fee just makes sense. So I brought my wife along with me this day so she could help load while I push stuff with the Ventrac. Uh, how can I say this diplomatically in case she's watching this video? She's, she's very careful. So um, the movements, she doesn't have any experience with a, with a skid steer, or excuse me, not a skid steer, an excavator. So I was walking her through how to do stuff and she, she grasped the concepts, but you know, getting the controls down is another thing. So I think she was on there for a few hours and then I looked at the clock and realized that I was gonna have to take over. <laughs> we were gonna finish on time. <laughs> She's watching me record this audio and giving me evil eyes. <laughs> I was very happy she was with me. She's a joy and a delight to be around and she made the work day go better. She also did help clean up the, uh, like you can see the leaves and sticks on the ground that need to be raked up. So she helped out a ton with that, that kind of hand labor that I would have had to do. I used the Ventrac to push all these piles of logs that I had skidded closer to the excavator. It worked really well, especially with those dual wheels. That ground was very wet, very damp, and it was easy to tear up. So having those dual wheels made a very light ground pressure, especially since I was pushing those heavy piles of brush. So that worked out really well. That was the plan all along, and, and thankfully it did work out well. This Yanmar 35, I'm gonna make a separate video on it talking about uh, what my thoughts were on it, but I mean, short version is it's amazing. Uh, it's a 8,000 pound machine for this job. It worked just phenomenal. I think probably I wasn't picking up more than a couple hundred pounds at a time, but it had enough juice to pick up everything I needed to. It was able to uh, press down and compact inside of that uh, dump trailer so that I had more room for stuff. You'll see a lot of what look like torn up pieces of ground, but that's just impressions from how wet everything is. So this was day five, was just making trips to the dump. I think we made four or five trips that day. Once I got on the machine, it took maybe an hour to fill it up, and then we had to drive to the landfill. Thanks to the dump trailer, I wanna say we were only at the landfill for maybe 15 minutes. We just drove in on the scale, weighed in, drove up to the top of the hill where we had to dump this. It was like a 10 minute drive between the job site and the dump. So very convenient workflow, and I'm very glad I spent the money to get the dump trailer and the rent the excavator without it. This just would have been such a miserable job. If you are ever gonna rent an excavator, at least for picking stuff up, I, I don't even know how you would do it if it didn't have a thumb. It makes such a big difference in loading brush into a trailer. And you know, you can see here, my wife is loading all the uh, aquatic vegetation that I raked out. There's a little bit of learning curve about where the thumb is gonna go and, and trying to to teach how to grab it, you know, almost like your hand rather than just trying to scoop it up with the bucket. But even when I got on there, I dug into the ground a few times because I couldn't see where the teeth of the bucket were or the, uh, the thumb was at an angle where it hit the ground sooner than I thought it was. So I've got a couple of spots there that I have to clean up and put in some fill dirt and seed, which I will later on another day here in this video, you'll see. If I am ever going to load brush into a trailer again, I won't do it without an excavator and a thumb. And right now I don't have the business to justify purchasing one of these things, so I'll just have to rent it. 
The fella I rented the dump trailer from in McClenny, I think he's got some Yanmar 25s, 35s, I think he's got a 40. I can't remember which all have thumbs, but because I needed the dump trailer and the VIN track, it made more sense for me to rent from quality equipment and parts, so that way I could come from my home with a dump trailer and VIN track, and then this excavator would already be here at the site. There really wouldn't have been any way for me to bring the excavator and the VIN track from my home in one trailer. This dump trailer, I really like the high sides. It makes it super heavy. Like empty this trailer is I think 5,000 pounds. You know, if you're pulling it with a 150 or a 1500 truck, my goodness, you're almost maxed out without anything in there. But for this kind of job where you're hauling brush, it works so nice because it's got really high walls so you can push a lot in there and you're not gonna overload it either. I wanna say the heaviest we pulled was maybe 3,000 pounds on that first load where we had the stump and some of that wet vegetation. But these dump trailers, these are just so nice to have. It makes such a big difference when you're doing this kind of work all day. Again, I don't do this work enough to purchase my own, so it's nice to be able to rent it and have that as an option. As we head into day six, this one was a weird one. This was a Sunday, and I really don't want to work on a Sunday, but we were going to a, a little get together that was only an extra, you know, 15 minutes of drive, and it was basically in the same direction. So because there could be rains Monday morning, I decided to work Sunday afternoon and get this thing seeded and covered. This is the area where that stump came out. So I'm putting in a little fill dirt and I've got some landscaper blend grass seed. But I really wanted this soil stabilized in case any rains came ahead of the schedule. So this is just a little broadcast spreader. Fun story, this spreader and seed was actually purchased for that Orlando job that went absolutely horrible. So I really didn't have any cost for those because I paid them on the other job. But I want to say each bag of seed was like 80 bucks and the spreader was, I don't know, 120 bucks. What I'm rolling out is erosion control mat. It's plastic netting with straw embedded in it. So what you have to do is nail it down. That's what all those green little stakes are. You've got to make sure your overlaps are correct. You've got to make sure you stake it down in the appropriate areas. You know, the manufacturer's got instructions of on this slope, you need them every two feet. On this kind of slope, you need them every one foot. This slope isn't really that bad, so it doesn't need a ton. But it is a little bit labor intensive because you've got to walk the whole length and pound all those pegs in there. The reason you want it staked down is one, so it doesn't lift off and blow away, but if it's not staked down properly, the water will just run right under it, and that's not what you want. You want this thing slowing the water down so it doesn't rush over it. These were the few spots that I messed up with the excavator, so just a little fill dirt there. I took some of the dirt away in the dump trailer on accident when I scooped and just spread the rest of the seed around this area. The vent track didn't really mess any spots up, but I did want to just throw some grass seed in the areas where there were a little bit of uh, depressions from the tires. You know, it's not going to hurt, and, and I would rather just use up the whole bag of seed than have a half bag anyways. So now we're on to day seven. Will I finally finish the job on day seven? Spoiler alert, no, I will not. I had hoped I would, uh, but I wasn't really seriously thinking I would. Even though it's day seven, just a few days after the last time I mowed with the Ventrac, I think it's actually like four or five calendar days. So it had not rained since then, so I wanted to take another stab at getting everything I could with the Ventrac again. Even if I was just able to get another foot on each side, because now it was a little drier, that would be so much less string trimming that I had to do. And that's kind of where I was at at this point. The Ventrac had gotten everything it could and I just needed to, to string trim the rest. This is an Echo SRM 3020U brush cutter. Uh, it can take a brush cutting blade. It, I just have a really big string trimmer head and it's got 0.135 line on it, which is very thick. Most of the time, if you're buying string trimmer from a big box store for homeowner use, that's gonna have 0.085 or 0.095 line on it. 0.135 line is super thick, it's super heavy. It You can't even put many turns of it on the string trimmer because of how thick it is, but it really cuts through this stuff well. 
0.095 trimmer line, it wouldn't have cut through this. It would have snapped, it would have broken, but it wouldn't have been able to get through the amount of stuff I needed it to. The bicycle handlebars on that string trimmer, they make it so you can use your arms to move it back and forth versus a standard string trimmer where if you're swinging it side to side, it's gonna be a lot more of your back of your core. So for something long-term like this, where you're gonna be on the string trimmer for a couple of hours, those handlebars make such a huge difference. It's really nice to have. I used the Ventrac to mulch up some of the debris that I had to throw from the bottom of the ditch back onto the bank. I experimented by using this Toro 60 volt shafted hedge trimmer. It worked okay, especially on the stuff that was really woody and the string trimmer just wouldn't cut through, but it was pretty slow. So I don't know if I'd recommend it. If it was the only tool you had, obviously use that but I just wanted to try it out and see how it worked, and it was okay. The little yellow tool I'm using is a reciprocating saw. I use that to cut a lot of the real thick woody stuff that the string trimmer nor the hedge trimmer would get. I think this is the first time I've had to cut up cattails like this, so finding out what worked best, even if it takes a little time, I was more interested in, in it as a kind of an experiment to give you guys some information. Making sure to string trim all along where the swales dump out is real important too. Right now it's the middle of winter so the landscapers aren't doing much, but what they will or won't get is kind of a question mark sometimes. So even though it's near the ditch, I go ahead and clear it out just in case they don't get to it again. This part was pretty terrible to work in. All the stuff at the bottom of this ditch is just like quicksand, sludge, muck. It's very difficult to walk in. And all of these things were far enough in that the Ventrac couldn't cut them. They were thick enough that the string trimmer couldn't hit them. So I had to go around and one by one cut them at the base with a reciprocating saw. My DeWalt pruner probably would have been quicker, but I honestly didn't think about it. And of course it was raining this day, so I'm in the muck, in the ditch. I will say this is, this is one good advantage of these jobs. It's very difficult to have an inflated opinion of yourself when you spend your work days crawling around in a ditch that's full of mud and water. Like it's a, it's a good mental reset, I've gotta say. If you've never done it, it'll, it'll put you in your place pretty quick. The other thing that was less than ideal about the Ventrac is it cut a lot of stuff, but it couldn't mulch it up. So I had to rake a whole lot of that stuff out of the ditch that again was too woody for the string trimmer to cut up. There was quite a bit more hand labor than I anticipated because of that. Now here we are finally on the morning of day eight. I knew this was gonna be the last day, one way or the other. I was either gonna finish today or I was gonna sleep at this place. It was, it was going to happen. Now all that had to be done was finishing up string trimming the two ditches. I had this little bit left here, which ended up taking another quite a few hours. I also had to clean up all the debris from those real woody things that I had cut down at the very end. So I think I ended up with two hours of string trimming and like another two hours of raking and shuttling things back and forth with the, uh, the Ventrac, the debris from where it was to where it needed to go. Oh, getting back to the string trimmer briefly, the only bad thing I can say about the 3020 is that I got it shipped directly from Echo when I was in a program where, you know, I tried some of their things out for them. So no dealer looked at it. I think the carb is not adjusted right because it's very difficult to start. And if you don't keep it running, it'll shut off. It doesn't idle, it just shuts off. So I'm sure that's a simple carb adjustment, but it's something I've never messed around with. It is especially frustrating when you're all hooked up. It's difficult to pull start when you have the harness on. So you've got to do this thing where you disconnect the harness, you start it up, and then real quickly you've got to grab for the throttle. And if you don't get it within a second or two of when it starts, it'll shut back off. Again, that's nothing against the machine. It's just a setting that I haven't messed with. Right around here, I actually fall down, which I did several times. This is one of the ones I caught on camera. But the issue with this one was that my machine was running and the air filter side dunked right into the water, sucked up a lot of water, and bogged itself down. So I had to spend the next 15 minutes taking the air filters out, figuring out why the thing wouldn't start, getting the water out of the air intake chamber. It was a real pain. Finally, I got it running by taking out one of the air filters. It's got two air filters. One of them was clogged with dirt and mud and it was soaking wet. So I just had to run without it. 
and once the inner filter got dry, then it started running well enough to cut with. That was really annoying because I, I thought it was not going to start back up for me when I had so little string trimming left to do. Thankfully, it did start and I was able to finish this stretch of ditch, which again is a real pain because the muck just holds on to your boots and you can't really twist or turn your feet. So I had to kind of like walk in straight, string trim, back out straight, shift over, walk in straight, string. It was a very time consuming process that, you know, it's just part of the job. If you're gonna have to string trim inside of a ditch like this, just know it's going to be very difficult to rain. It's going to take you a lot longer than you think. All things you would think that I would know by now, but somehow I still manage to forget until I'm down there in the ditch and I'm like, oh yeah, this is how these jobs always go. That's right. This was all the debris that got cleaned up. That was one more trip to the dump. I use Jobber to track all my projects. It's a software that I use to run my business. And here you can see all the expenses for this job. I forgot to put those lake rakes in. Once I did that, total cost for this job were right around $1,600. It's very helpful for me to have software that keeps track of all these things because one, the next time I get a job, I can look back and see, well, this is how much that other one costs. So these are probably the costs I'm gonna have moving forward. But also it helps me figure out exactly how much money I'm making and where I need to make improvements. And so I mentioned it earlier in the video where I'm still getting the hang of bidding these jobs. That jobber software, the CRM that I use to run my business now, is something that's going to help me get better and better the more that I do because of the information it stores. So if you're interested in Jobber, there's gonna be a link in the description where you can try out a free demo for yourself. And then you'll also get a discount if you wanna continue it after that demo. But that was this stormwater project. I really appreciate you watching. If you ever have questions about these types of jobs, please reach out directly to me. It's not that hard to find my contact information. As always, thank you so much for watching. Look forward to making the next one for you.